You'd be forgiven for thinking that you've travelled back in time when you meet Derek Jones here in Irishtown, County Dublin. Hello, my name is Derek Jones. I collect items associated with the military history of Dublin from the period 1913 to 1923. Yes, Derek has one of the country's largest collections of military antiques, which he started collecting when he was just a young lad. My father collected uh, military antiques, so he collected flintlock swords. It was normal for me as a child to, to grow up in an armoury, if you like. Uh, he had a hatchback car, he was well known around town, um, wheeling and dealing, buying and selling. And, um, I, I'm the eldest of three brothers and I suppose I'm the one that, it, that rubbed off him. What's really special for Derek are the stories that come with each different piece. How one family, as, as in my great-grandparents' case, ended up in the British Army. Um, somebody else's great-grandparents or parents would end up in the Irish Volunteers and would have been in the GPO, but they could have lived side by side. Um, and that's, you know, that's the intricacies of, of, of the collection and, and the detail behind every, every individual piece. And with thousands of pieces and stories in his collection, Derek can link many of his items together, painting a clearer picture of historical events. The dagger here was, was made by Rory O'Connor. Um, who was executed in December 1922. He had been best man at Kevin O'Higgins' wedding um, and, and Kevin O'Higgins signed his death warrant so, and subsequently then he's, he's assassinated himself in 1927. At a lot of time when you're collecting, you, they can, and collectors would know, you have that eureka moment when you actually discover that something which was ordinary run of the mill um, suddenly turns out to be belong to a famous personality uh, has a significance in history, is an important item, and that, that's the adrenaline rush, I suppose, in collecting. If it's an anarchy type of uh, way to put it, but like whether you collect stamps or beer mats or military medals, um, I'm sure most collectors would, would appreciate that. The Silver Cup was awarded for the Defence Trinity College. Um, it was the, the Officer Training Corps defended the college during the 1916 Rising, and they were presented as a token of gratitude by the merchants in Grafton Street and Nassau Street. Derek finds the only problem with collecting is once you start, it's very hard to stop. There's certainly an addictive element to it, um, like, and I think any collector would, would, uh, would empathise with that. Um, you're, you're constantly looking out, like it's always in the background, it's, it, it never goes away. Derek lives with his wife Nicola, their daughters Laura, Megan and teenage daughter Emma who, of course, is mortified that there's a TV camera in her kitchen. The younger girls sometimes help their dad collecting. Um, I really like the big penny because when the war person dies, they give it to the parents to remember it. Most of it is kind of interesting, but some is just random and weird. Uh, my father always used to say to me, we don't own any of this stuff, we just mind it. So. I'd like to think that if I can mind it for future generations, um, that's, that's my input to history. Well, while Derek's daughters might have some interest in his collection, over on the other side of Dublin, Mick O'Farrell's kids are more interested in what's happening on the iPad than their dad's collection. <laughs> my name is Mick O'Farrell. I'm an amateur historian and an author, um, specifically on the subject of 1916 and the Easter Rising. I started collecting in about 1995 because I remember I, w I thought to myself one day, I know more about D-Day than I do about Irish history and, and that, w that wasn't a good thing really so I thought I better educate myself. So in I went to Eason's and the first book I picked up was On the Easter Rising and really that's all I've been reading about since. You have to start doing karate. When the kids have gone to bed, Mick finally has time to enjoy the over 700 books he's acquired on the 1916 Rising. I can lose myself standing there looking at this book and that book for an hour without even blinking. I, I don't want to use the word obsessive, but let's, let's just use it then. I don't know if there's anybody else as obsessive about getting them all as I am. And ironically, the book with the biggest value in his collection is the smallest book in his collection. This is the diary, personal diary of volunteer Joseph de Bruyne. Um, he bought this diary in, in 1915 with the idea that he might keep a record of what he was doing in 1916. And he's, he talks about how he, um, 
he can't pay the rent and he can't get work because he was a carpenter and that kind of thing. And on the day of, that the rising began, luckily, luckily for us and for history, he brought this diary with him into Jacob's garrison where he was stationed and he wrote in the diary every day during the rising. And it's the only known uh, diary written under fire by a volunteer. Here he has written, you can see, just about plug, plug, plug. And that's, he's describing the sound of bullets that he's hearing. And he writes about the fear and the darkness and the vastness of Jacob. So it's a fascinating piece of history. You can see that he writes very small for the seven days of the rising. And every page is chock-a-block. It's packed with tiny writing. And then you can see that it goes from being very full to being completely empty. Uh, about half of them just escaped and they, mel they, they merged into the crowd. So this is written in the back. This diary was found in Jacob's factory after the rising in Easter 1916. So luckily for us, he threw it away because this would have been evidence against him if it was found on his person. And now we have it 100 years later. Well, both Derek and Mick will be showcasing some of their collections on Easter Monday in the Gresham Hotel at Road to the Rising.